and I pray that you will recover. The Lord will give you the strategies of recovery so that you don't live a life of losses. It's not everything that we lose that is worth following. But there are things you lose, you need the intelligence to follow. I know in our time, so much preaching has been done on your future relies on those who are still in your life. Anybody that has walked out of your life is not part of your future. But it is never true. Sometimes we use that as a way to cover our arrogance. Because several times when we lose, we become arrogant. Because we are trying to care for how we feel. And you have to throw some bullets so that you deceive those who are listening to you that you are fine. Even when you are not fine. The truth is, we feel the losses of our life. Can we be sincere? Have you ever lost anything that you still wish is in your life? Uh, today? Hallelujah. What did you say about it? You said, I moved on. <laughs> I'm good. I'm fine. But the truth is, sometimes you are not fine. Therefore, in the next three days, I want to share with us on how not to be people that lose what we should not lose. And even if we lose certain things, the wisdom of God on how to go about it. Please tell your neighbor, there is something you lost, it is still there. That could be the wrong neighbor. Tell the other one, there is a man that walked out of your life, he's not yet married. Humble yourself, he's still available. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's not always everything we have lost that we should just forget about it like that. Some things are not worth losing. Amen? And um, I always say that the Lord speaks to us through encounters, as some people call them Bible narratives or Bible stories, but they are not Bible stories. They are not Bible narratives. They are platforms that God uses to reveal his character. Before I go further, I want you to uh, put it there. These things were written for our example. So every time you study anything in the word of God, it is an example. It is you are studying the pattern of God. You are studying how God deals with men. You are studying how God transacts. You are not reading a story. That's where the, the, there's a problem because we think we are dealing with Elijah and I am excluded. No. You are actually looking at the pattern of God. And that particular character is dead. So God is showing you, this is how I'm going to handle this. If you find yourself in there. You must find the character in the Bible that represents your life. Every time you go through something, there is a character in there that represents your life. Can I hear praise God? Now, let's look at this. Glory to God. Look at it. Now all these things, what happened? And that is good, Jim, for you. You turn your neck and then we read it together. One, two, three, go. <laughs> Let's read. Now all these things have been written as what? As examples. Okay, continue. And they are written. Now, what I want you to pick there is that they were written for our. Somebody say our. So, which means everything written there is written for you. It's written for me. So, as you study the word of God, always personalize the word of God. Everything you are studying is a recovery strategy for your life. Personalize it. So, like what we are going to... Uh, look at it here. You have to personalize it and bring it to a place where it is your own personal encounter. Till you personalize the word of God, it will never benefit your life. You've got to look at it and personalize it and push for your portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Second Kings chapter 3. Glory to God. And then as I finish, all the single women should be able to share this video as much as they can. Because as I finish, I'm going to drop a few things. 
Even people who tell you, I don't need a man in my life. They're just lying to you. When they're alone, they need a man in their lives. So I'll talk about some very important things while I'm closing. And so you better invite someone, share this, and stay there. I pray for you that losses will not be the normal part of your life. I pray you will not lose what God has intended that you keep. I pray that what God has ordained for your life, you will have the wisdom to keep it. Don't be a loser in life. There are reasons why people lose in life. There are reasons why pastors lose. Jesus said something, put it there. And in John 17, that I don't only pray for these ones, but I pray even for those that will believe through their word. Those that you gave me, I have lost none. What God gives you is not intending that you lose it. You will not lose your marriage. You will not lose your job. You will not lose your children. You will not lose the influence you have built for 30 years. Don't, don't just take losses and say, the Lord gave, the Lord has taken. Why did he restore job twice? Double. Because he doesn't believe in losses. God wants you to keep what you have. Don't lose the grace and the anointing upon your life. Keep it ever fresh. The older you grow, the more anointed you'll become. You will end strong. There's something called ending strong. You will finish not being pitied. You'll finish being celebrated by this word. Can I hear an amen? No. I want us to look in, the, in this story. There's a very, very, is a very wonderful setting. Number one, uh, all of you know Jezebel and, and Ahab. Jezebel was a wicked woman. She was a witch. Because that is how she was raised. Their family practiced witchcraft. It was a royal family. In this life, if you are a witch, you are a witch. As much as they are rich witches, they are poor witches. But if you are a witch, you are a witch. So Jezebel and, and, and wealth, no matter how wealthy you are, it doesn't stop witchcraft from being transferred. So Jezebel was raised at the center of witchcraft. And one king of Israel called Ahab married Jezebel. And Ahab didn't know that by marrying a woman, you marry the altars that the woman is loyal to. Don't just see women. Before you settle with anyone, ask them, what are you loyal to? Study what they are loyal to. Sometimes you are not marrying a, a, a girl. You are marrying your mother-in-law. You don't marry people. You marry who they are loyal to. Look at how the mother is treating the father. You are quiet now. Don't just be possessed with a round face, slim legs, slim eyes. Sometimes people are slim, but what they carry... There's one woman you marry and you sink a nation. So Ahab married this woman called Jezebel. And you know Jezebel, when Jezebel came to Israel, she came together with her gods. Women come with their gods, by the way. When you marry a woman, don't tell her the demons of your place. When you pay dowry, you collected those demons as well. So their battle becomes your battle. When you marry into any family and you change your name, and you begin giving back to children there. Don't tell them you are demons. They are demons. Become your demons. They are battles you are fighting. Not because you are born like that. But because of where you are married into. I've seen men who commit adultery. Not because they are adulterers. But the wife imported something into the marriage. Be careful. So Jezebel quickly comes into Israel. And comes with a system of worship. And begins to kill prophets. And turns the heart of a man that was anointed by God called Ahab against God and they begin to build for the devil. There's a woman you marry, you'll never build a church. You can only build a club. Because the anointing running through her is not a church anointing. It's a club anointing. Shout, I hear you, pastor. Oh, single people need to hear this. Don't just be possessed. Hey, hey, when I look at her, I can't sleep. It is true. You can marry sleepless nights the rest of your life. <laughs> so Jezebel comes into Israel and establishes a system of worship and she's against the prophetic but listen, she died Ahab died but they had a son that took over from the father and when the son took over from the father one of the nations that was loyal to the father rebelled against the son it's very painful uh, some of the rebellions that we see you see, not all rebellions count. When people rebel, always ask the question, what have they rebelled with? 
People come into your life and leave. But when people come into your life and they leave, always ask the question, what did they live with? As I told you, there are things that are worth pursuing. Sisters, there's a man that lives your life. If you come to me, I will advise you to go and pursue him. Let me say this. Pestissimo. Tell your neighbor Pestissimo. But if he doesn't understand, leave him alone. But let me say this. I have learned that in this life, we are uniquely different. Even if we console ourselves that mungonya moja kitoka, mungina takuja, you will never find two people who are the same. So when you lose me as Morizolo, of course you may meet pastors and preachers, but you'll never meet this particular one. You have lost me like that. And when I lose you, there may be people that can do what you can do, but I will never meet you exactly. So may I treat you with the uniqueness with which God has made you to be. And handle me with the, with, uh, uh, as the unique gift that I am. We can never be the same. I know you are troubling your husband. Hey, hey, what wengi hapa? Wana nitaka hapa inje. Nikitembea tu hapa inje. Wee, chesa. But let me tell you, there's no man like that, um, that, that man. Hata kama ana wenda wazimu. Hakuna wenda wazimu kama yake. You can only meet a higher wenda wazimu or a lesser wenda wazimu. Lakini hiyo wenda wazimu mezoea has made you who you are. Can I hear an amen? So never say that when you walk out, others walk in. Because no two people are the same. You may find a man that will buy you a car, but he may never make you feel like the man that you left. We are not just talking about gifts. We talk about the respect behind the gifts. And there are few people that can respect you. If you have one, cherish them. Now, so Ahab dies and Jezebel dies. Their son takes up and one of the nations that was loyal to them rebels. If I have time, we only have three days, I will go into that so that we deal with the spirit of rebellion. Say in the name of Jesus, anything that God has given me that is planning to rebel against me, it will not happen. There are rebellions that pain. Now we get into the story or the encounters I call them. Now look at verse number 5 of 2 Kings chapter 3. But it happened when Ahab died that the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. Now, the thing is not just rebellion. The thing is, if the guy has rebelled, what has he rebelled with? We don't just follow. We don't, not every battle is worth fighting. Did you know that? There's a job you lose and you say, praise the Lord. But there's a job you lose, it is better you just go back there and say, oh, please, I know I've lost the job, but can you just confirm I've lost it? Somebody say, Amen. There's a man that tells you it is over. Don't throw your body and say, ah, I am beautiful. How many beautiful women are suffering out here? Beauty. You must know it was God's grace. Nothing happens to us because you are beautiful. But, but there are beautiful ladies that are suffering out here. Ah. Oh. See the time I'm beautiful, I'm beautiful. Where will you fika half? When I walk on your tambia uchi, what you use a milia on a kaji. It never trouble your wife, I'm handsome. Man, there are handsome men out here that married Vinyangarika. They are looking for a wife like your wife. Protect your home, man. So listen, so it is not just about that king rebelling. We need to look at what did he rebel with. And I want to address everyone listening to me. The things. You may say, okay, people go, people come, but I want to ask you a sincere question. Some of the people that have walked out of your life, if you analyze them, what did you lose? It is you that can tell yourself the truth. There are people that walk out of your life and you'll never be the same. Am I speaking the truth? Okay. So it happened when Ahab died that the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. It is important we find out this guy that rebel, what did he rebel with? Quickly, let's go to verse number four. Are you there? Are you in verse number four? Okay, if you're not here, you can twist your neck and look back. This is a way to train you to have your... By next week, you, you must have a tab or have an iPad or download a Bible on your phone. If you have Mulika Mwizi, you must have Mulika Holy Spirit. Somebody say the Amen. <laughs> Now look at this. If you don't have the money to buy, I release money to you. Tomorrow you will get a better phone. Everybody say amen. So that you can be digital. Have your everything with you. 
I'm praying this church. Everyone must have a Bible. Now look at this. Now, Mesha king of Moab was a sheep sharer. We are looking at the, the guy that rebelled. was a sheep sharer. And he regularly paid the king of Israel 100,000 lambs. And the wool of 100,000 rams. Let's leave the wool. We may not know the cost. But let's look at 100,000 rams. Now, look at me. Let's give a ram, a, a good ram, let's say, 7,000. 7, so if a man gives you uh, 100,000 lambs, it is 7,000 times 100,000. How much money is that? 700 million. Let's multiply. Simple mathematics. 100,000 times 7,000. How much is that? 700 million. My brother, if there is someone that gives you regularly 700 million and he rebels, Usiniambia, you moved on. This was a king. <laughs> this was a king. Someone gives you that kind of a deal. Let's take for example, someone who gives you 50k every month and you don't work for him. When he rebels, you want to tell me you move on? Do you know why pastors become bitter? The kind of bitterness God has had to deliver some of us from? Sometimes the man remembers the tithe that left. And you begin to preach things you can't understand. May God deliver every young pastor that is listening. Can I hear an amen? Losses will be there, but don't permit losses that you can prevent. So, someone rebelled against this man that was giving him not just once in a while, regularly, 700 million was coming. But the man rebelled. Raise your hands and say, any rebellion in my life that is going to lead to my losses, these three days, Lord, I pray for unusual recovery in my life. I pray that the things I have lost that I should not have lost, I pray for recovery in my life. I pray that whatever you have ordained for my life, I will not live a life of losses in the name of Jesus. Very important prayer. May something you thought you'll never see locate your life. Can I hear an amen? May something that left your life by satanic manipulation be restored by God in the name of Jesus. So, this guy rebelled. Bringing you there very quickly. This guy rebelled. When we deal with the spirit of rebellion, it means we are dealing with something that was once under you that escapes you. It is very painful. Controlling. Something that once agreed with you, now differs with you. Have you ever been there? A son that was not in your business is now going around telling people you are a witch. And you know, if such a person says you are a witch, people will believe it. Because of the way he was loyal to you. Be careful who is loyal, loyal to you. Because sometimes the enemy throws a javelin using loyal people. Be careful how you show your face with people. You are, you are, your best friend today can become your enemy tomorrow. <laughs> oh, the person calling you papa today can call you chapati tomorrow. The one calling you dad now can call you dead in the next one minute. Be careful. So we are very careful with man of God. You know, you know the reason why some of us take our time is because we have been in this thing for some time. We have seen all kinds of things. We have seen people that can die for us, turn around and turn a dagger now wants to kill us. So listen to this. So something that was once in agreement with you begins to differ with you. There are people who live a life that is very strange. A life where anything that is blessing them before long is against them. You need to deal with that thing. Anything that is a door before long becomes a funeral. Anything that was giving them joy before long begins to give them pain. Raise your hands and say, I reject that. When the spirit of rebellion happens, those that were once for you are now against you. It's very painful. Pastors go through it. People that were doing evangelism and advocating for the ministry, when they begin to evangelize people away, you better be sure you are called. If God doesn't help you, you are in trouble. <laughs> Those that once obeyed you now defy you and the pain
pain of it is when they defy you very openly. It is painful when a client you once had that used to post your stuff and all that and talk about your business, when they begin to show openly they no longer believe in your business. You need God. So this guy rebelled. And the pain is, he rebelled with 700 million. The guy was in trouble. 700 M. I pray for someone here that some money used to come to you, but you no longer see that by this three days encounter, you will begin to see it in your life. May the Lord restore what you have lost. Can I hear an amen? Help that was once coming stops coming. Already in the title of the message, lost help. Help that was once coming is no more coming. You know how painful that is? Your salary is help. You once had a good salary, now you don't have it. You once had a good source of income, now you don't have it. You know how that can be troublesome. Your budget will eventually fall short because some supply is disconnected. I'm addressing someone that once used to have a supply. Now you can't meet up the budget. When you lose your job, you can't meet up the budget. When you lose something that used to come to you regularly, eventually you'll begin to look like you're defeated. Because something used to come that is no more coming. I pray for new channels in your life. I pray that by these three days, the Lord is opening up a channel. Those of you on Facebook, you need to type this and you need to share the video and say, I partake of the new channel that God is opening in my life. I'm speaking to you from the place of prayer. There will be restorations in your life, in my life, and in what you do. Listen, you are now shouldering a bill that you had stopped shouldering. That's why it is painful when you lose people that were standing with you. As a lady, a man came into your life. Oh boy, was giving you 100,000 every month. Gentlemen, good men are rare. If you find one piga bagoti, watch a ikiburi a ikisas. Good men are few. There are few men that will treat you well and not use it against you. Women, not where you are, say my men. Say my husband, I'm beautiful. There are beautiful women that are living in tears. They are being insulted and humiliated. Because Papa Menu Lua Piki Piki. A man is talking and talking and talking. Akianza kuongea piki piki ata paka onajua. Ata paka okiono kiendesha piki piki kuingia. Onajua hii ali nunuliwa. Ata umbu onajua. A man can talk, a man can mishandle you that even the cat in the compound. You know how a man treats his wife, even dogs, even cats, workers, and everyone in that compound will treat that woman like that. Even monkeys on the tree. They know what goes on in that house. If God blesses you, the good man, humble yourself. That's why our Ugandan sisters will even kneel down to serve the husband. If your husband goes to work in Uganda and you are arrogant, you have 25 prayer points to pray. Somebody said, I hear. May your husband not go to work in Tanzania with this attitude that you have. Shika mo baba. Umekula kitu baba. Ungependa sima vile unapenda baba. You know, preaching in Tanzania, I know. At that time, I have to call my wife on the phone and say, baby, are you okay? I'm <laughs> Somebody shout, hallelujah. Raise your hands and say, I will not lose my help. Now listen to this. Because there are people you lose and you begin, even though you are saying, I retain my pride. I retain my dignity. I beg no man. But if the guy was giving you 100K, there's a hundred K that is not coming. Na baba huma. You kitu huma. Tell your neighbor, you kitu huwa ina huma. There will be restorations in your life. Now listen to this. So you are now shouldering a bill. You are once not shouldering. You are inconvenienced in a way. The guy rebelled with 700,000. It is as good as saying that a source dried up that was once supplying the life of this man. Anything that has dried up in your life, if it is a brook that was once producing water and it has dried up, you will hear the voice of God telling you, now move on to Zarephath, for I have commanded a widow to take care of you. The good thing about God is that he will never leave you stranded. He will open another door. Amen. Somebody say amen. So, a source dries up. A helper withdraws their help. A helping hand that was once helping you is suddenly cut off. Have you ever been there? If you've not been there in your life, one day you'll find yourself there. It pains when a helping hand is cut off. Pains when your husband stops giving you money. You know, 
Not that women don't love money. Not, not that women love money. They don't. It's just that there's something the devil told them in the Garden of Eden that they have never told man. In this meeting, they will tell you the truth. Somebody say, Amen. You are left with a very bad slogan. When health that used to come to you eventually vanishes, there is a slogan that you remain with. And it's not a good slogan. It is what I call it the I used to be slogan. It's a very bad slogan. You should have seen me the days when I used to be very powerful. May you not say that till you die. May you not be I used to be. Mimi nilikuwa naguza pesa mpaka unaanza kulia mchungaji hii mikono unaona hii hii mikono imehesabu pesa may you not may the lord deliver you from a used to be slogan may the lord may the lord not allow you get to a place where one day you say i used to be powerful i used to have a great ministry i used to be anointed no you will end strong in the name of jesus i used to have life used to be easy provision was never a problem People used to give to me. Meeting up a budget was never trouble. I used to be. It's a painful slogan. Why? Because something that used to come to you is no longer coming to you. It is called a loss. And you have to deal with that spirit of loss. There are people that seem to, uh, their lives seem to be plagued particularly by a particular spirit of loss. They lose, they can't explain why. Their life is like that. There are people who are afraid of having any good thing in their life because something tells them you lose it. They are used to losing. I have come to you tonight in the name that is above every name. I replace that mantle of loss with a magnet of heaven. Your life will attract good things. Your life will attract help. I call you every day to speak over your life. Those of you online, your life will attract help. By the end of this service, something will have touched your life that was not there before. Phone calls will begin to come from places you never thought they can call you again because we have dealt with that spirit of loss. Raise your hands and say, any spirit of loss in my life, let the grace of God paralyze it in the name of Jesus. It's a bad slogan that you must not operate in. You must not function in that slogan. You must not function in that anointing. You must not function in the place of I used to be. You know, I used to be. I will be giving you some reasons why people lose. Sometimes you don't lose because of the devil. You lose because you are stupid. Like it is Yasema Vizuri. Let me decorate it. You lose because you didn't know. My people perish for lack of knowledge. And lack of knowledge, simply paraphrased, is what we call stupidity. There are people you cannot sustain in your life if you are stupid. May you not be beautiful and stupid. If you are beautiful and stupid, you will suffer. Then people will look at you and say, but she's a very beautiful girl. Why is she going through this? Because behind the beauty, the skull has a valley. Don't use your head as a decoration. May the Lord give you wisdom. There are things God is going to give you, you need wisdom to keep them. Amen. There are people God is going to bring into your life, you need wisdom to keep them. I'm about to come to the women. There's a reason why some women are single. And very beautiful. Not because there's no man, there's what they need to know. Ignorance. You are an ignoramus. That word is not good. Lay your hands on your head. And say, I will not be beautiful with an empty head. <laughs> my head will serve my destiny even pastors need to pray that prayer you can't preach for two hours and say it doesn't matter you will know it matters when you start seeing some benches remaining empty you know it matters that when the spirit of the lord comes upon me what is curfew the lord is bigger than curfew continue <laughs> one day you'll know it was not the spirit of god somebody say i hear but ladies and gentlemen, I'll bring you back to this. God is a God of restoration. Why should I talk about lost health? I'm talking about lost health because there are people here, you have lost some things, but God is going to help you recover them. There are ladies listening to me, you have missed opportunities, you should have not missed, but there is a God that turns the hand of the clock around. Never limit God when you have lost. He can restore. Yes, he can. Tell your neighbor, yes, he can. Oh, I didn't hear you tell him again. Yes, he can. I tell him, my God is a God of restoration. Yes, God can. God restores us 
even when we find ourselves in exile. You know what exile is? When you find yourself living where you should not live. Because you made a mistake and you are dispossessed of your, of your place. A man can make a mistake in ministry that makes him lose his place where he was anointed. Great generals of faith like Catherine Kuhlman made a mistake. She married a man that had a wife. The Holy Spirit warned her. Said you are about to make the greatest mistake of your life. But Catherine Kuhlman says, I loved that man more than I loved God. And the man left the wife and the children. You know Catherine Kuhlman? The woman who impacted the life of Benihim. You know why I'm saying this public? Because this is public information. It is out there in the public. And her ministry went down to a point that at some point she stopped ministering. She went down. She lost it. But one day, after eight years, the God of mercy visited this woman of God. And God used her in the latter stages of her ministry more than God ever used her. Of course, there was pain because when you have certain issues, Christians will judge you more than the devil. Christians are worse than the devil. Christians will pray for you to divorce, but don't try to marry. They will tell you, thou shalt not marry again. Christians are worse than Satan in this generation. They kill their generals. When anybody loses, I pray for their restoration. If a man loses his ministry, I pray that he recovers. But God used her as much as other doors remained closed. Because God will forgive you, but Christians will not forgive you. If you like repent before them crying, they will not forgive you. You must learn how to take the forgiveness of God and run with it. Somebody shout, I hear. Shout, I take that. So God can restore us. I pray for any minister of God out there that is watching me. That your ministry is not diving because of a mistake you made. God can restore you. I pray for any businessman in the house. You have lost so much business because you made a mistake. God can restore your life. I pray for young ladies that probably you have lost a relationship because you did something stupid. May God give you a second chance. As somebody shout, God will restore my life. In the name of Jesus. Now listen to this. God restores us when we find ourselves in exile. Amos chapter 9 from verse 14. The Bible says, I will bring back the captives of my, of my people Israel. They shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. Someone will build. They shall plant vineyards and drink wine from them. Your work will stand again. They shall also make gardens and eat food from them. God will give you some lands. God will give you some property. You will build. You will develop. You are coming back on your feet again. I will plant them in their land and no longer shall they be pulled up from the land I have given them, says the Lord your God. That is the, that is the nature of God, that God restores land that you lost. But men desire to see you die after you lose, particularly Christians. Believers, particularly we pastors, we never want to hear that the man of God who went down is coming up. It's like he's offense people. People pretend we are praying for you when you are going down. You will not go down. I stand with you. You will not go down. I speak from this altar. Your ministry will not go down. I speak restoration into your life, into your business, into what you do. Particularly single girls that have lost out of not knowing. God is giving you another chance. He's a God of restoration. Somebody shout, I take that. God promises us what we call renewed strength. When you have gone through issues in life until you feel like you're not going, moving on again, God promises us restoration. So when the son of Ahab had lost 700 million, it was only right that he embarks on an attitude of recovery. And he did. I'll begin to pick on that tomorrow. So when he lost, he didn't surrender. I say, let it go. I pray don't surrender to loss. There's a God of restoration. Don't surrender to what has left. There's a God that wants to restore your life. I have learned that my restorations have always been greater than what I had before. Can I hear an amen? amen? So God promises to renew our strength. Isaiah 40 verse number 31. But those who walk, who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. May the Lord renew your strength. Amen. 
May the Lord renew the grace and the anointing you feel like has left you because of the stress and the battle that you have gone through. God will do something in your life in these three days that will bring your strength back. There is a car key coming to your hands. Utaishika, who's going as a home by 20 hours because God has renewed your strength. God renews our strength. Number three, when shame is all over, we serve a God that restores us. Isaiah 61 and verse number 7 says, instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. God is not interested in shaming any man. God is happy when men are honored. Jesus said, a prophet is not without honor except among people that are familiar with him. God is a God of honor. Those who honor me, I will honor them. God wants to honor you. He wants to put something in your hands that people who thought you are finished will look at you and say, this man has nine lives like a cat. Oh boy. Instead of shame. Because God is not interested in shaming us. Look at this. Instead of shame, you shall have double honor. And instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. That God will give you twice. That is the intention and the will of God. When you lose, don't dig your grave there. God can give you double for your losses. When shame is all over. God has a way of raising honor out of shame. Dear man of God, listening, the devil has attempted to do some things in your ministry so that men can look at you like you're ashamed. God is raising honor for you in the name of Jesus. You are here as a businessman. The people you raised that you taught business are parading themselves, embarrassing you and ashaming you. God is giving you some level of honor. We serve a God that knows how to answer people. I've seen God answer on my behalf. It's not all the time you answer. Sometimes he answers by a car. And then you are just alighting to get into a place just when they are also alighting. Now they don't know whether to say hello or collapse and die. Say, hey, 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 hey. We prayed for you. We knew God will bless you. No, they didn't pray. It is the car that is making them pray now. You will see honor in these three days. I call honor to your life. I call honor to your destiny. I call honor to what you do. I call honor to your ministry. God will honor you. It's called restoration. Honor God, God will honor you. God restores our health. Maybe you are battling with something here that is affecting your health. I want you to know that we serve a God that restores our health. God restores our health. Can I hear an amen? Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 17 says, For I will restore health to you and heal all your wounds, says the Lord, because they have called you an outcast, saying, This is Zion. No one seeks her. God will restore. Ladies and gentlemen, when you have wounds, you have been wounded, you have been hurt by people you never expected to hurt you, God has a way of bandaging your wounds. God has a way of taking away the pain. There are cars I call payback cars. There's a relationship God gives you to pay you back. May you have a payback, baby. Can I hear an amen? What wataki kuza? May you have a payback job. How are you, Mnapenda? May you have a payback promotion. May you have payback in ministry. Oh, shada bagada. Ligaba. One time, someone really insulted me in ministry and is somebody that I raised, and the person walked away telling me very nasty things. And said, I'm, I've been the biggest giver in your life. Who can give to you like me? I say, hey. That week, God brought someone that has a similar name with a man. I'll not tell you what the man did. When the man left my office, God asked me. God will wipe away your tears. For every shame that you suffered, God will glorify himself in your life. Can I hear an amen? Raise your hands and say, God is a God of restoration. I shout again, God is a God of restoration. Now, I come to this and this is very important. The reason some single women lose. We don't know why the son of Ahab lost. Now, we'll touch on this again tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow I'll talk to men. But men don't lose as much as women. As much as when I put up the post, there's a brother who said, 
Pastor, these ladies don't know how we feel when we approach them and we realize we have been disqualified on the grounds of poverty. The best insult you can ever have is the insult of a father-in-law. A man telling you, you can't marry my daughter because you are broke. It's a good insult. Because if you serve God, God will ensure one day they swallow their words. If a woman refuses to marry on the grounds of poverty, brother, don't be bitter. God will avenge. Let God avenge. People may not know your value when you are broke. But God has a way of answering and causing them to wish you are their son-in-law. I know what I'm talking to you about. Can I hear somebody say amen? Akuna matusi kama matusi, a father-in-law telling you what you have. People don't listen to you, they listen to what you have. What do you have? Yaka kinyangari komeleta hapa kananin. May God help us. Hmm? So allow me to touch on the reason why some sisters, particularly, because there's a lot of man of God. I don't know. Man of God, pray. Man of God, I need a soulmate. I want to give you some very simple advice for 10 minutes. You better take it. Can I hear an amen? Avoid these mistakes. I'm talking about loss. Now tomorrow we begin the journey of restoration. If you apply this, some of you may recover some things you have lost. I've learned women lose because of fear. Bonus for son. Hakuna mahali miandikwa a man shall pursue you. Of course there are instances where Abraham's servant went to look for Rebecca. But you, if you read the Bible very well, you realize men can pursue and women can pursue. It is in your Bible. Okay. 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 I said in the morning, and I want to repeat again, for those who didn't listen, to listen clearly and to understand what I mean. Listen. And listen very well. There are sisters who have lost potential husbands because they waited for the man to speak. And since the man didn't speak, it is indecent for a woman to tell a man how she feels. Hey, Pastor. Pastor Lord, it is indecent. They consider it indecency. They consider it you look like a... Pro Do you know, I can mention to you marriages where it is the, the woman that proposed. Very good marriages. How many of you know one? I know. Pastor knows. There are, there are marriages where, because if you are ashamed, then you are afraid. You will weep the day the man is marrying another woman. You will weep in a wedding that was supposed to be a wedding. The righteous are as bold as a lion. So let me tell you a truth I've never told you before. This lie that a woman cannot propose. Please quickly give me Ruth chapter 3 verse 1. What did Ruth do? And I hear sisters praying, thou shalt bring a Boaz. If, 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 no matter what happens, there is always a Boaz. But let me tell you the truth. Boaz is not the one that proposed to Ruth. That is not what I mean. <laughs> I have not said that after this, you start calling men left, right, and center. No. <laughs> I'm just saying. How many of you know women have a sharp vision? There's a reason mama accepted to marry me. Aliona Mbali. Aliona is birthdays unaona sai. They didn't look like it then, but Aliona Mbali. And as a woman, there's a vision God has given women. You can look at a man and you can tell this guy has a future. He may not look like it. And unangojea akuproposie na pengine aoni. Wewe unacheza wewe. When you have vision, what did Ruth do? As I begin to wind up, what did Ruth do? If you go to Ruth chapter number 3 from verse number 1, the first thing they did is that they planned it with Naomi. As a sister, you must get some friends that you can sit down and plan. Sis, I love this guy. Have you seen him? Yeah, even me, I've seen him. He seems to be a good guy. What do you think I should do? You need someone. You need a Naomi in life as a sister. 
na kusaidia na plan because you need wisdom Jesema tu amka asubuhi moja na upinge sema no the lord said you are my husband no don't go that way you need some wisdom somebody say amen can i hear somebody say amen now let's pick it up from verse number 1 then naomi okay then naomi uh, her mother in law say to her my daughter shall i not seek security for you that it may be well with you how many of you sisters know that marriage is security did you know that kuna vile unasikia and that's why sisters were single but even when they write they say pastor i'm a single mother there's something they understand you understand so look at this that it may be well with you now boaz whose young women you are with is he not our relative in fact he is winnowing winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor verse number 3 therefore wash yourself and anoint yourself put on your best garment and go down to the threshing floor but do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking remember ruth had lost and ruth needs recovery in life she lost her husband remember the theme of our meeting is loss loss lost help when a woman loses the husband she has lost help ruth has lost she needs a husband she needs security that it may be well with her i pray for every single woman listening that god will not just give you a man god will give you a man that will make things be well in your life so they are planning look at this i'm closing because my time is almost up therefore she's advising her wash yourself and anoint yourself put on your best garment and go down to the threshing floor but do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking look at verse 3 then it shall be when he lies down that you shall notice the place where he lies and you shall go in and cover his feet and lie down i didn't say lie on anybody's bed i'm just sharing with you what the bible is saying and he will tell you what you should do now listen you need to learn from ruth did you, you know some of you didn't know it is in the bible So all the sisters that are praying my father i have lost hey boas boas pursue me boas will not pursue you you need a strategy you are seeing a decent young man that has a vision in the church and you feel every time you see him unasikia kitu kinatetemeka ndani i'm giving you the plan nunulia ye suit buy him a suit on his birthday tengeneza ka cake na hakikisha you are the only one you have to be smart in matters of marriage don't be number 6 you are seeing a god fearing brother you know sim to wanawake na unahisi umeongozwa na mungu huyu ni wako nani kama hasiki fungua masikio yake many sisters today are single because of the tendencies they have that have kept them from connecting with the help that they need in their life ukikapo proposiwe hey utangoja utangoja because some brothers don't hear the holy spirit did you know let me tell you this did you know that if you are a good woman who have work who has worked on herself who is an asset it is it is it is it is difficult for you to plan when you know your reliability so i'm talking about work on yourself and become an asset Did you know if you are a woman that is an asset and you tell a brother in sincerity that I love you do you know it is an honor to that man do you know that a man of honor will respect you for that Anagojewa ni pasu wako pasu we ni mwizi anagojea ni somebody needs to pursue me who told you are you a thief to be pursued <laughs> So Naomi now I begin that we'll close it tomorrow so we we'll, we we'll still have two days to go so Naomi tells Ruth what a mother in law tells Ruth you know what there are beautiful girls in that field if you don't take action you may just miss it so we are going to plan my daughter usikai to upon there hati unangojea so Naomi begins to give Ruth the plan and number one plan is the location praying for a god fearing man and you are never found where god fearing men are found you must go where boaz is someone needs to see you they know see you in the spirit 
You keep missing services. Important occasions. A wedding. A come together for singles. A prayer meeting. As you pray, you pray and you watch. Even the Bible says watch and pray. Don't just pray like, 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 like a ram. Like a lamb. Headed for the slaughter. Watch and pray. When are we going to always come? Never misses prayer. Loves the Lord. When the pastor says we are building a metoka na It means he can build you a house. Watch. And you are not seeing. The sisters are waiting for him to propose. Dear sister, ever since the times of John the Baptist. Until this time I'm standing on this altar. The kingdom of God, including that of godly marriage, is suffering violence. Mark territory. I have four dogs, two female dogs and two male dogs. They, they, you know these decorative small dogs, they make a lot of noise but they are just for decoration. Listen. The dangerous ones are very deadly. Now the small one came out in the house when I was coming for prayer and as small as the small one is, the male deadly dog because it's like they have a, a, a relationship. The male small dog came and they had a conversation. I was watching. They had a conversation with the big dog. But the big dog protected the female dangerous dog. The small one wanted to come and greet the female. He stood on the way. He, he said, ah, Baba, we are talking about this way, this way, this way, this way. Not this way. Dogs mark territories. If you bring a new one, they have marked their territory. If dogs are that smart, now we go there, they will pursue me. Are you a thief? They, hey, 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 by my father, let them pursue me. You have seen a brother. I know it will be considered this is not a good advice. But look at Ruth and Naomi. That pastor doesn't have integrity. Who told you? You want to tell me Ruth didn't have integrity? When you are looking for restoration, be smart. I told you a good brother will disagree because he was poor. You know you are running away from poverty. Now God has remembered him and you know somebody is not yet in his life. If I were you, my, my sister, show up with a gift and tell him I was stupid. I was a fool. I was young. Now I'm ready to settle. But don't go there when you're looking like a used tire. Naomi advised Ruth. As I close, one is the location. Who will pursue you when he's in Nakuru and you're here? Who will pursue you in that game reserve where you normally go to sit on Sunday and pray for a godly marriage? Are you praying for a godly lion or a godly marriage? And you are running away from where the godly people are. Naomi told Ruth, go there in the hapu. Be there. Let brothers know you are available. I didn't say walk naked. But let them know you are available. That very brother, Okisha Pika Kapafimeko Gazuri, Peter around him during, but Nikisema look for three people. Atakama uliko meka pale kwa kona. Mutafute mahali yako. Let him notice anytime I say, give an high five. You look for him. Kwa ni yiko nimi? Hauta ni toyo mimi siyo nyogo. Somebody shout I hear. So the location is important. You must change your sitting location. You can't be admiring a brother saying, leo meka pale, father, I pull him. He will see a lady there. I pull him. Walk him to the gate. Become an usher for once. Time when he arrives. Say, you're welcome. He asks you, but are you an usher? No, no, no. I just, my brother, God bless you so much. Give him a seat. And a bottle of water. In a service. In the bottle of water. Now, come on, guys, I'm chewing. Come on, God bless you. Now, you pick up perfume. You're going to pick up perfume. You're going to pick up perfume. You're going And you begin to worship and cry to God. The brother who said, this sister is crying to God. Somebody shout, power! So, no, the location. My time is up. Then Naomi said, wash yourself. Wadada, to walk. Wash. <laughs> it is your Bible that said, Oga. Oga. Please, my time is up. It will be interesting tomorrow. We have three days to do this. Online, wherever you are, put your offerings together. We'll pick it up from there tomorrow as the Lord helps us. But this will be very interesting. Very, very interesting. You know, God's word is very practical. You will not die in loss. 
everything you have lost, whatever has rebelled, God is giving you a chance to recover. There is always a chance to recover. The son of Ahab invited three kings and told them, we are going on a recovery mission. The help you lost is coming back. The money you lost is coming back. The opportunities you have lost are coming back. Whatever your ministry has lost, God is giving you a chance to bring it back to your life. You are blessed tonight. You are saying, men of God, I connect with that word. It is my time to recover what I lost. Put your offerings together as we give to God tonight. The details are on the screen. And as we give to God, uh, once you do that, I know some of you need prayer, need words spoken over your life. Copy those transactions. Send them to the same WhatsApp number and I will be speaking over your life. Raise your hands again and say recovery, restoration over my life in the name of Jesus. Fathers, we give to you tonight. We bless your holy name. We honor you. We bless you. We, we magnify you. Thank you for recovery. Thank you that lost help is coming back to us. Thank you we will not lose our stupid people. Thank you that wisdom is upon our lives and nothing that you give to us, we will lose it because you are a faithful God. In Jesus' mighty name. Put your hands together to, uh, for Jesus even as we give tonight, as we celebrate the Lord, as we walk in the spirit of recovery. Zingine utapata recovery kwa ndoto kilala. Some of them will come in the dream. Some of them you'll meet people you have not met in a long time. You'll get phone calls you've not gotten in a long time. And I prophesy the end of the, before the end of this year, God will give us over 100 weddings in this church. Let recoveries begin to take place. Can I hear praise the Lord? Put your hands together for Jesus one more time. Now may the grace, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Usiambia dada mwenyako hapo ukipuna dada yote uko nje waambie oga 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 hiyo ndio kitu pastor me. Naomi aliambia Ruth, hata unapoenda huko what is an ingredient if you are going to be married? What is one of the requirements? So I know there are sisters who have not used the water well, but from tonight. Unaweza oga na hata uoge kitu sasa usiku naambia bwana Mungu mtumishi wako alisema tuoge na na hata neema alipona kwa kuoga. Mwambie jirani yako Oga. My mago the abia. Oga. When Jesus was fierce. See you tomorrow night. God bless you. We have prayers in the morning. Uh, tomorrow we pray only for two hours. And please take note. If prayer time is five, we only give you an allowance up to six. If you come after six, you'll find the gate closed. There are people who came today and found the gate closed. We have to be disciplined with the time of prayer. So tomorrow is five, six, seven. Then Friday, six hours as usual. So as you pray, Omba, now na hoga, na Omba, now na hoga, na Omba, now na. Una hoga na una na, na una va mask pia. God bless you. See you tomorrow.